Welcome back to On The Avenue. So much has taken place since our last show, so we have a lot to discuss today. We have entered into a new month, and I cannot believe that it is already November. Can you believe how quickly this year has flown by? November means that we are not only at the end of the presidential election season, but we are at the beginning of holiday season. talk about how we closed out the month of October. On the 31st, we held a Harvest Drive-By Parade for the children and youth of our church. They were able to safely ride through the parking lot and collect lots of goodie bags filled with sweet treats. At the end of the parade, their final stop was the photo section where each child was able to show off their wonderful costumes and take a fun family photo. Across the parking lot though, just hours before the parade, the final bricks were laid on our new cathedral and Christian education complex. As soon as it is safe for us to gather, we will be able to worship together in our new sanctuary. God is doing a great work here on the Avenue, and we are so excited to see this vision come to pass. To God be the glory. Every single day, Wheeler Avenue works hard to meet the needs of the community, but we kick it up a notch around the holiday season, especially for those who are homeless and hungry. If you've been following us for a while, you know that two of the ways we cater to those groups of people during the month of November is through our annual Thanksgiving feast and Canning Hunger Initiative. Last year, we fed over 900 people at the feast and collected over 20,000 canned goods for our food pantry manor house. As you can imagine, things will look quite differently this year because of the global pandemic that we are experiencing. Here to speak with us now about how Wheeler Avenue will be adjusting the execution of these efforts this year is Reverend Benita Barnes, director of our social services department, known as Matthew 25. Thank you for joining us, how are you? I'm fine, how are you? Good, good. So each week we hear about the Missions and Mercy offering, but many people still don't know what those funds go to. Um, I didn't even know until I got the chance to work there a few years ago. And so could you please give us a brief overview of what exactly Matthew 25 is, who you serve on a daily basis, and how you serve those people? Matthew 25 started probably over 50 years ago um, by Reverend Lawson. And what we do on a daily basis is we serve those in the community that are in the 770 zip code areas. And so we help people with their lights, water, gas, and rent and mortgage. It just depends on what people are going through. So many different things happen. It could be a job, it could be illness, it could be your car broke down and now you're trying to catch up and still be able to get to work and do the things that you need to do. So we are uh, assisting with those uh, kinds of things and we have been for years. We normally will have people to schedule an appointment and come in and uh, see us and bring their information so that we can assist them. And so we've been doing this for years and we have volunteers that come in every day uh, to work and they're mostly members of the church that come in and they come in and answer the phones and assist us wherever needed. Great. So with COVID now being our reality, <clears throat> how has the ministry been affected? It has really been different, Adrian. I have to say, because we had to do this thing a whole new way. And uh, at first it was a little hard for us to try to figure out how to do that because we couldn't see people. So what happened is we decided to put something online. So you can go online to the church website, which is www.wheelerbc.org. You look under member services and you'll see Matthew 25. You go there and fill out that form and then our office will get in contact with you so that we can uh, assist you. It's been a little difficult because we're finding out just as they have in the school system that a lot of people don't have computers. A lot of people don't have access 
to the things that we take for granted every day. And a lot of people have phones and it's hard to do what they are trying to do on the phone. So COVID has affected us in that way and trying to make sure we can still help people even though they may not have all the necessary tools that they need to do what they have to do. So it's it's been a little different, but we're working it out. We have uh, have an application that's online and we will, sometimes people will drop the applications off at the church and then we'll call them and try to set up something so that we can help, we can assist them. So it's been difficult, but it's been working out. So I remember back when things were normal, you all were getting hundreds of calls on a daily basis um, of people who needed assistance. So I'm sure those numbers have spiked with the number of people being out of work now. Um, how are you all managing that influx? Are you taking more appointments a day? We are. We are we're able to take more appointments because they're going online and filling out that form. And what we'll do is we'll separate those forms out and I'll take some of them and my coworker, Maria Guillory, will take some of them and we will just do calls all day long and email people back that uh, need help. So it's a lot. I think I've seen over 400 applications online come through. So uh, it, it's a lot, it's a lot. And we are constantly answering the phones also. So the phones are still being answered. Uh, we're not scheduling the appointments. We're telling them what we, they need to do in order for us to uh, assist them. And we're finding out that a lot of agencies are giving out Wheeler's information to call contact Wheeler so that they can assist. We don't normally assist with all of the bills uh, when you call in. It's usually one or the other, and we assist with a portion of it. So sometimes we do have to refer people out to other agencies and other zip codes. So it's really been interesting. I'm just glad we can still do what we do. Okay. So with our big food drive and Thanksgiving feast that we do every year, um, what changes are being made as to not aid in the spread of the virus while also trying to feed as many people as possible? Well, we uh, decided that what we would do would be a grab and go. So we, 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 we can't do what we normally would do, which is have people come in and sit down and have dinner and we talk with them and, you know, uh, just have fun with them. What we're doing this time is we're going to still have our dinner. It's going to start at 11 o'clock on Wednesday, uh, November the 25th. And what we're going to do is, is serve hot meals, serve a drink. We'll still be able to give out blankets because we're serving the community that not only that are hungry, but those that are homeless too. So we're going to be able to still give that food out and hopefully to thousands of people. What we'll do in the next couple of weeks is go by uh, some of those areas where we know that people are being fed and homeless people are, and we'll pass out flyers and let them know that uh, Wheeler will be there for them on the 25th to get that meal. And so we're planning to do that. We're gonna have volunteers come in, but not so many. We're still gonna have to do the uh, mask. You're gonna have to have gloves and we're gonna provide all those things and we're gonna take your temperature before you come in just to check and make sure that you're okay. And we will have people that will uh, bag those items that we're going to give away and uh, have somebody that's gonna hand them out. So we still need maybe about 15 volunteers. We have about 15 now. And you can email me if you want to volunteer. That's bbarnes at wheelerbc.org. And just, uh, if you've volunteered with us before, you kind of know the process and what, what we do. And it's gonna be the same. We're just gonna be handing out meals instead of serving people food. Great. So is there a deadline? Um, if they want to volunteer, is there a deadline to send that email to you? I need to have that e those emails by the 14th, which is next Saturday. So if you can email me and uh, you've had this experience before and you've worked with us before, we're more than happy to have you come. Now, we may not be able to take 100 volunteers in like we normally do, but we will take a few in so that they can help us bag and get those things together so that when people come by, we're just handing things off to them. 
Well, great. I'm excited about um, all that's happening in Matthew 25. Thank you so much for coming to speak with us today. Really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Have a blessed day. Thank you. You too. We are truly Wheeler wherever. And I am glad that this pandemic has not put a stop to all of the ministry taking place through our church. If you or someone you know may need any assistance, visit Matthew 25 on the Member Services tab on our website, wheelerbc.org. If you're like me, you enjoy a good discount every now and then. And this is the month when almost every business is promoting their Black Friday deals. Well, Wheeler is full of Black business owners, and starting today, we will be highlighting them and hearing about their journeys to entrepreneurship and how we can support their businesses. Our very first guest for this segment grew up at Wheeler Avenue and has been very active in this church and the Third War community for nearly his entire life. Mr. Jonathan Howard, in addition to all of his many other jobs and positions in the city of Houston, is the owner of a Smoothie King franchise located at 4226 Ella Boulevard. Turn your devices up because you don't want to miss this. Thank you for joining us, how are you? Doing well, thank you for having me. Good, thank you for coming. So you are the owner of a Smoothie King in your hometown of Houston, Texas. That's pretty major, how does that feel? Well, it's definitely a blessing. It's an honor, it's a privilege, and it's a pleasure. I'm really uh, glad to have achieved this goal so far. Awesome. I want you to take us through that process. Um, at what moment did you wake up and say, I want to be a business owner and I want that business to be Smoothie King? Good question. I, I didn't wake up and, and say that, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but after watching some, some great mentors here in this city, uh, it definitely became a goal of mine and, and eventually a passion. So it was around 2014 when I uh, ran into a, ment a mentor that, that owned a few Smoothie Kings and uh, he was a, an old teacher of mine at Jack Gates High School here in Third Ward. And uh, he told me if I ever wanted to learn about it to, to call him and uh, we could get started on one together. So I did that and about four years later it became a reality. Wow. So. Many of us saw and even attended the grand opening um, about two years ago, 2018. Can you tell us about some of the trials and or even delays that you faced leading up to that grand opening? How late do you want to be here? Give us all you got. <laughs> no, no, there were uh, plenty, plenty of trials uh, and, and tribulations, uh, as, as many business owners will probably tell you. Um, I know some of the worst of those were encounters with uh, with city permitting, which uh, is always pushed back for some reason. And so it, it took a while to, uh, to get the build out, the, the build out uh, done. And then uh, after we finally got through that city permitting process, uh, Hurricane Harvey hit. <laughs> and mm. so that was another major setback. And so uh, I think those were the two major trials and tribulations that we faced on the way to opening. But, uh, but we made it. Praise so, the Lord. Praise God. Awesome. So when we talked before, you mentioned faith in business. How, what role has your faith played in this whole process of opening a business and maintaining a business, even through a pandemic? Well, well faith, faith is everything. Um, just like faith without works is dead, uh, business without faith is dead. Uh, think about how many uh, businesses still, great business ideas still live only in the minds and, and brains of people. And, some that may never become a reality, but with faith, all things are possible. And, um, you know, I've, I've really, uh, it's, it's played an integral role in this business, even uh, since its inception, just all of the conversations with God, uh, just saying, God, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put myself out here and just trust you to do your part. And that's, uh, that's faith in business. <laughs> you awesome. need it. You have any more plans to open any more locations in the future or any other business ventures that you want to talk about? Definitely, definitely. Um, I plan to open at least one to two more franchises, uh, either by myself or, or with some partners. Love to uh, bring in people that, that look like us and that uh, are like-minded. So looking forward to that. And uh, after that, I'd love to uh, get into some real estate and, and some other types of investments. So. Uh, you know, I'll pray on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that faith in business again. Faith in business. 
So for aspiring entrepreneurs, what piece of business advice can you give from experience that you wish someone could have told you? Just uh, to be persistent, that everything isn't what it seems, to make sure that you, uh, I know it, it, it looks glamorous to, to be a business owner, but like anything worth having, it, it comes with its uh, sets of trials, tribulations, and challenges. So I would just tell them to, to be persistent, to be prayerful, to be patient, all the things on the Wheeler shirt, <laughs> and, right. that, uh, and that God will do his part to, to see you through once you plant those seeds. Perfect. Well, can you tell us where to find you on social media and how to best support your business, your address, and all of that? Absolutely. We are at 4226 Ella Boulevard on the corner of 43rd and Ella in North Houston, about uh, five to 10 minutes from downtown. So come by. Uh, you can order online at smoothieking.com at our location. Uh, we'd be glad to have you. And thank you all for your support so far from the church and, and just from the city. It's been a lot of love and we really appreciate it. And we love you back. Awesome. That's the best Smoothie King in Houston, Texas. So make sure you all make it, make it down there when you get a chance. Thank you for joining us, Jonathan. Thank you, Anchor Woman Addie. <laughs> Thank you to all of our special guests. Make sure you patronize the businesses of your fellow church members because we want to see everybody succeed. That's all for this evening. Thank you for watching. And remember, although we can't be together physically, you are still on the avenue.